Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today's lesson is physics props, and we're going to use the classic teapot and max. So a physics prop is one that you can kick, bump, break, explode, move around, etc. on the game. And there are different uh, attributes that you can control. Well, one lets you control a lot of these, and this is going to be an overview on making a simple one and then a slightly more advanced one. So for our first one, we're just going to take a teapot model. We want it to be a static prop. Use local origin. It's fine. And for the collision hole on this one, we're just going to actually just say auto hole. Uh, we'll do a more advanced one over here. Now the physics props need to have a collision hole. And the next thing you'll need to work with is the prop data and custom Gibbs rollout. Now, the first thing you have to do is choose the proper base, which is the basic uh, physical properties of your object. One thing to keep in mind is uh, you may need to uh, watch about the surface property and the base here because they do have different things. For example, if I choose that the surface property is brick but it, its physics is cardboard, you may get mismatched uh, sound effects for your physics type. It's something to be aware of. In this case, I'm actually going to choose wood, which is an odd thing for a teapot, but it's for the purpose of this demonstration. And for the base type, we're going to choose wood, wooden medium. Wooden, we'll do wooden large. And we're going to leave everything else as is. Okay? And you should go read the docs on these if you want to know more about these in the Valve developer community. I do need to point out one thing that these changing these does change the underlying base values of these however you do not see that in the UI and none of the UI values are actually ever used unless you change them from whatever their default setting here is so if you actually want this to be allow static you have to click it and if you want to explicitly say it's not you have to click it on and click it off none of these values here are actually stored in the helper unless they are changed at all otherwise all of the values come directly from whatever the base type is which is all part of the code in the background in the source game engine so the next thing is we need to compile our model I'm going to go ahead and compile our texture here that I have on this model and then I'm going to go and compile the model itself and now we'll open up a, a demo scene and see what we've got here so here we have a, a little scene in CS and there's our teapot so now we can bump it around and if we want to we can shoot it and it'll break and notice it broke into these wood chunks pieces of wood these are called gibbs and they're gonna fade away and disappear and that's important Let's go back to our model here and let's go to the wallworm helper. Notice that in the prop data we have wood and large. Now the type of gibbs that are used is based off of the, uh, the base type that we chose here. And if we wanted something else we would have to choose a different, if we didn't want wood and we wanted another type you might have to choose metal break or another one. Now notice that not all of these actually have gibbs when they break and what gibbs they have is dependent on the base type and those are things you need to research and learn on your own or experiment and find out which is which. You can override and tell it to use a certain gibbs class uh, by choosing the gibbs model class. So now we're going to actually make a completely different physics prop with this teapot, but we're going to get a little bit more advanced with this one. Just bear with me here, and I'm going to point out that this model is not got two sides of uh, the 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 model shape has only got one side, and if you look at it from the back side, even though inside of Max here you're seeing the back side of this texture. In uh, source, you wouldn't because it's not uh, got two sides to this model. So what we're going to do to begin with, I'm going to take this, 
and I'm going to apply a shell modifier and I'm going to get rid of the outer amount and just put the inner amount to one so now this model has a front and back side in fact I don't know if I want a full one I'm going to go 0.5 and then I'm going to actually clone this model. I'm going to right click, hit clone. I want this to be a copy. And this copy, let me just isolate this the copy here. I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. And each of the pieces on here, I'm actually going to break up, detach. And the reason I'm doing this is because in this model that we're making here, I want it so that when it breaks apart, I want it to break into all of these individual pieces. So there's going to be five or four chunks. And I'm going to call these my Gibbs. Do that so I can easily select them later. Get out of isolation mode. And let's go back to my teapot number two. So let's open Wallworm back up. I'm going to choose Pick Model, and I want to pick my teapot number two. So I want this to be a pottery. So I'm going to choose Pottery as a surface property, so it makes the right sounds. And we'll go to the Prop Data. So to add the, the pieces to our model as custom Gibbs, what we need to do is first set this Gibbs model class to Custom Gibbs. Then we need to select our Gibbs objects, which are all of these pieces here. At this point, I'm actually going to apply a reset X form to these, which you may want to do this type of thing on occasion with models. So these individual pieces have X forms applied to them, which is fine now. So we have these four Make sure we just have those selected. We have these four pieces selected here. And we hit Add Cell Gibbs. At that point, it will create a bunch of helpers that are letting us, we can go and, and work with those Gibbs themselves later on if we choose. Change their specific settings. Oops. So there's these four Gibbs helpers. So we can make hauls for those real quickly if we choose Wallworm, Wallworm Utilities, and Hull Helper. And with these selected, I'm going to change this down to like 22, something smaller. And I'm going to hit Quick Hauls. And what that's going to do is create a haul for each of the these models. So there's all the hauls for those things. and we need to compile all of our Gibbs which is going to do right here. It's going to make four four models for all these Gibbs. And once we've got those we want to go back up and compile the main model. So here we have our scene with the two models and we still have this one which breaks into wood chunks. Now notice this one over here actually broke into the pieces that we made. So this lets you make it actually more realistic. In fact, inside of Wallworm you can control the properties of these and you can actually make them break up into yet further Gibbs by nesting the Gibbs and you can control their how much damage the pieces can take and you can control how long they might fade or last in the scene. But you can see now that this it blew up because of its Gibbs settings. But I could give them higher health and they would last longer. I do want to point out that if you're exporting a scene directly from Wallworm as a, a VMF 
and you have models and their GIB set, these models, these GIBs will all export as individual models into the VMF, which is not what you want. So in order to, to exclude those, you would go to the Wallworm Utilities, go to Proxy Tools, and you would tell these to be excluded in the VMF exporter. Otherwise, it will export the model and all these GIBs, and you can actually get errors um, based on the way the models are set up. So along with this video, I'm going to package this file, which you can actually export directly as a VMF um, because it's a sealed level. I just have hidden layers in here. Um, you can always just uh, unhide the layout layers. And I also have a couple of convexity point entities to spawn in, which will let you spawn in the game Counter-Strike Source. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest Wallworm tools at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.